It is nearly a decade now since the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development under the auspices of a World Bank funded project set out to give the urban infrastructure of a cross section of municipal local governments a fresh look. Started in 2013 with 14 municipalities, the Uganda Support to Municipal Infrastructure Program, or USMID, has grown in leaps and bounds. Today, it counts 12 municipal councils, including 10 regional cities and 11 refugee hosting district local governments, among its beneficiaries. From municipality roads to markets and bus parks, hitherto run-down infrastructure has since seen massive transformation. The net result has been the decongestion of Uganda's capital city, Kampala. We were able to get funding and we want to thank the government of Uganda, especially His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, for having allowed us as a ministry which is in charge of urban development to take on that program. And where we have passed there is a mark, there is a mark on the part of government but also on the part of the communities where this project has been in most of those years. And uh, I want to appreciate USMID, the USMID program that with the coming with this new design of making roads with nice drainages and giving us street lights, it is also bringing back the other night economy. People now can trade in the night. Oh, Tujinja is so different from other areas because if someone is coming from wherever they are coming to Jinja to see the source of the night, they are not coming to Jinja alone. They are coming to Jinja, they are coming to Uganda, and they are coming to Africa. Usimud has done a number of things here. One, the, the main market, which is, is it that a four billion was done by Usimud. The Arua Taxi Park, modern taxi park, uh, under Usmid funding. We have done Idi Amin Road, we have done Lemerjoa Road, we have done Adroa Road, we have done uh, Enyau Road, and we have done School Road. We have, the impact is too big. It has uh, led to appreciation of land where the roads have passed. It has led to people's businesses have kicked. But in all this, we're appealing for efficiency. We're appealing for the community to be interested in these projects. These projects, Usmid will withdraw, leave them in the community. The local governments, whereas they are involved in the implementation process right now, they should be preparing their capacity to take over the maintenance and management of these facilities. With the vast bulk of the country's average annual GDP growth of 8.1% traced back to the capital, the USMID program was tasked with pulling off a diversification. It would do this in three broad ways. It set out to strengthen the capacity of participating municipalities in fiduciary, safeguards, urban planning and own source revenue generation. Secondly, it was tasked with increasing planned infrastructure as per the fiscal plans in question. Lastly, it set out to enhance the capacity of the management of Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development in backstopping the implementation of the program. Now we hope that uh, when we come to the end, we will maintain the momentum of building roads and uh, making sure people are in safe places. We have also started uh, sensitizing the people on the use of this infrastructure. We don't want it to go down. If you look at Guru, you can really say, I think this was a very good choice for elevation to, to, to a city status. Barara is another example, Bale and Ginger. So I think from where we started, there is a very good step towards achieving of that objective of institutional capacity building. Of course, most of the things which are seen are the infrastructure on the ground, because these are tangible. But <clears throat> behind that, there's a lot what is happening. And uh, this includes the training of staff, the urban uh, center staff, the town class where the chief executives, the municipal engineers, the procurement people. There's also equipping 
the, 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 these uh, cities, there's also development of systems. Systems means, for instance, computer uh, software for them to be able to plan, for them to be able to do designs. So a lot actually is done that cannot be seen, but can only be realized from the, the, the performance of these entities. And uh, it is very clear that all the years round from the beginning, there is growth. Okay, so the indicators show high performance. Actually, in the in the last four years, I think we moved from about 60 percent. I think now we could be heading towards 80 percent if you aggregate all those indicators. So, based on that assessment, it is obvious that we are achieving um, the objectives. When these people came, they started working on this road, and we, the locals here. We have been monitoring these people from day one. If there was anything, we could report to the councillors. The councillors could come to the ground. We could handle them together. Until even the Chinese came and said, since they started working here in Uganda, they, they have been supervised more. They have not been supervised in any way in Uganda like uh, this road. It's a very good road. We give thanks to the government and those who have funded this. And seeing that now finalizing with the construction and also the market that I'm seeing the finished building they're also finalizing so that all people from the market who are not inside they have to aid to enter inside the market and they begin selling in the market and the road that were too dusty we are going to see some change When like this road will be finished, those small vehicles will be using this road to their destinations and they leave that main road to those trailers that transport goods. And I think it, it will reduce on some road accidents. And Oluol Road is one of the roads that people, people love so much, business people like so much. Now that it is done, we expect a lot of businesses because it's now direct. It's, it's nice to be on a highway, tarmacked, you see. The town's roads are good. And uh, I like how it has been constructed. People are many in town nowadays. The government has done so much. We thank the government because of these roads that you easily connect to main streets, you easily connect to villages, being the center and the regional city. Mbarara is at the center of Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Tanzania. So we are making it more look so beautiful. Seen through the lens of kilometers, the progress the Jusmid program has made is staggering. 78 kilometers of two-lane roads, 94 kilometers of covered dreams, 70.5 kilometers of open drains, 111.22 kilometers of pedestrian walkways, 45.32 kilometers of cycle lanes, and 65.43 kilometers of parking lanes. The program has also been a guiding light as seen through the 2,633 solar streetlights installed. The 1,300 trash cans to manage later have also guaranteed a clean bill of health. Three taxi parks, a lorry park and a bus terminal have also breathed life into what was once considered a flagging transportation infrastructure. Augmenting this transformation, there are 328 lock-up shops and 143 parking lots of vehicles. Well-lit green streets have led to improvements in physical and mental well-being. And basically, the town has greatly improved. The first phase we did about 3.5 kilometers. Then we added about 2.5 kilometers. Kampala Road is almost also 2.5 kilometers. And then these other new roads, we have Jinja Road, we have Kasim Babiha Road, we have Unjeru. All these works are ongoing. When you move on Church Road, you see very many new apartments which have come up. You see the hotels. Just because we have improved the infrastructure, so people are able to invest their money in an area which is properly organized.
the intervention of USMIT, there is a growth in our revenues. Because uh, all these roads that have been done, they are within the business, central business district. So people have put up new guest houses, hotels, others are investing in uh, schools. Uh, Gulf City is among the first towns that benefited from USMIT project and uh, uh, a quite a number of kilometers were, were raised to, to, to Tamak. More than 20 kilometers were done and actually most of the roads that are within the center of the town were made Tamak and street lights were put plus other road furniture like uh, walkways and drainage and uh, ducts for telecommunication. All that was done. Because Yusumid has taken much of the central business district uh, with the good roads, now we are concentrating using local revenue and Uganda Road Fund to work on the roads which are in the periphery of the town. But as far as livability and environment is concerned, it's been major, a major, major improvement in, in, in most of the cities where they've, they've done these USMID projects. And we commend them for the program. And I think, as I said before, we just need to make sure it's sustainable and have a full-on program to ensure that the infrastructure doesn't collapse. Along with oil and gas, agriculture, tourism, as well as human capital development, infrastructure takes prime importance in the National Development Plan 3, thanks to its great multiply effect in the economy. The rapid urbanization rate, currently at 2% per annum, coupled with government projections that put urban population growth at 20 million by 2035, mean that the thought process intended to make cities and municipalities livable needs to gain more traction. With 18 months left before it runs its course, the USMID program has set the pace. The program has also succeeded in putting money into the pockets of Ugandans by compelling contractors to use local labor. What we've noted as PPDA is an improvement, first of all, of the capacities of the procurement professionals that are manning these entities. Because as a requirement, each city or municipality or refugee hosting district is supposed to have procurement professionals manning the procurement and disposal units. Previously, this was not the case. Anyone would manage the procurement and disposal unit. We had accountants, we had store managers, and every, but now the procurement function is managed by people who are qualified in procurement. And it was a key requirement under USMID. We applaud USMID for this. This has raised awareness levels of projects in the numerous local governments and also brought forth the issue of public acceptability, social accountability and oversight by locals. Yeah, I appeal to the business community and the residents of Lugazi municipality, particularly the users of these new roads. They should keep the roads clean and they should not damage them. We can see a lot of rural urban mig um, migration. People are coming to do business within the city. You can see the boom. We want to appreciate the bank. We want to appreciate the, the government of Uganda for the, for, for the provision for the USMID projects, which have done us so good. And we are looking forward. The USMID program has also put many urban cities in a great position to attract investment necessary for development, job creation, and productivity. This has enabled the cities in question to benefit from economies of agglomeration and scale. They now boast of strengthened capacities in fiduciary, safeguards, urban planning, and own source revenue generation. The trickle-down effect has been an increase in GDP collection for the country. It is 2021 financial year. That is the time when we fully went on the, uh, activating all these cities and municipalities. I told you nine cities and uh, nine cities and uh, 11 municipalities. We activated all of them on IRAS. Uh, before halfway, their collection was 26.5 billion, all the 22. But now, uh, after one year of implementing IRAS, they move from 26.5 to 32 billion. And this uh, increment, we attribute it mostly onto the introduction of most of these strategies and more so the introduction of uh, an integrated revenue administration system. Which system? 
we have increased our budget from 1.2, from 800 to 1.4 billion. So you can see, uh, because of that, the market which was constructed, the market which we can zoom in and see, these roads reach the market. Because of that, now goods can easily reach the market on better roads. And because of that, the market has improved from, uh, as an auxiliary, the market has been supported from almost 70 million to 140 million. The second phase of USMID, which has 18 months to end, government extended support to some of the district local governments that host more numbers of refugees. This include the refugee stressed districts of Ajumani, Moyo, Yumbe, Arua, Isinjiro, Chiriandongo, Kamwenje, Terego, Madi Okolo, Obongi and Lamu. The infrastructure strengthening shall enhance peaceful coexistence amongst host communities and refugees. Some of the services, like hospitals, schools and so on, they are integrated. Both the refugees and the host community use them together. Therefore, this intervention aims at bringing together the two communities and creating harmony among them. And like I said, it provides an opportunity for markets. The populations are now large. They produce so many things, they need to sell them. The refugee areas need to reach the nearest urban areas. So you need to create those markets. Infrastructures such as small bridges and box culverts on impassable sections, culverts and fill material to address bottlenecks in swampy areas and removing black spots prone to accidents have been buttressed. In the pipeline are infrastructures tailored to promote sports, arts and culture, among others. Finals of co-curricular activities, they are held in Chidio, which is like, this is like six kilometers away from here, six, seven or ten kilometers away from here. A refugee child comes from all the way from the settlement to go and watch the finals in Chidio. So we are cutting the distance almost by half, so that instead of them going up to Chidio, they would stop at the district headquarters here. and Usumid funding projects. In Ajuman we have, uh, first of all, many refugees, more than the host community. And uh, we have about six projects. And this includes market in Kiraba, in Okusijan sub-county, resource center, in, uh, in Okusijan sub-county, we have uh, one other big project of about 1.8 billion in uh, Ajumun Town Council. Uganda is currently the largest host of refugees in Africa and third largest host in the world at that. The country has taken in a little over 1.4 million refugees with most of them settling in the West Nile sub-region of northern Uganda. The influx of refugees has turned the rural communities into settlements with urban characteristics. Uganda has one of the most progressive refugee regimes in the world, where refugees have the right to work, establish business, move freely within the country, access social services, own property, and obtain documentation. Refugees are also given plots of land on which to cultivate and build houses. This is putting enormous pressure on the local government's ability to provide adequate infrastructure and services to what is by all counts a rapidly increasing population. The Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development has also extended the support through development of fiscal development plans of the areas of future development and enhancing land tenure security. As you know, we have uh, refugee hosting districts where we are also carrying out planning. The benefits of planning cannot be overemphasized. Planning has happened, but you know planning is dynamic, it doesn't stop. More importantly, capacity has been built, so it is expected that the local governments will pick it from there with their own resources. The, the good thing is that this program also was looking at uh, enhancement of own source revenue.